In this video, we'll demonstrate the ease of integrating DeepSeek into your existing or new Billship projects. We'll begin with DeepSeek Chat, a conversational model designed for natural human-like interactions similar to GPT-4. And then we'll explore DeepSeek R1, a model specializing in logical reasoning and problem solving akin to OpenAI's O1 reasoning model. We'll even showcase how you can stream messages and optionally use a distilled version of DeepSeek with Billship's integration with Grok. For those unfamiliar, DeepSeek, particularly DeepSeek R1, is a large language model currently taking the internet and AI world by storm. It's a powerful reasoning model where if you ask it to do something, it's going to think about said thing before it does it. It's similar to the human thought process where the mind evaluates the request, considers relevant information, and plans an approach before taking action. But enough of the talking and let's start building. Here I am in Billship and I've just went ahead and created an empty workflow that we'll use as a playground for our deep seat nodes. To begin, we'll bring up the nodes library and then we can scroll below to the deep seat integration group. Currently, we have three integration nodes with deep seat. The one that we'll start with is the text generator node. We also have a JSON generator node and a stream response node for streaming messages back. To begin, we'll add the text generator node. The deep seat text generator node is similar to the GBT text generator node where you can give it a set of instructions, pass a user prompt, and have the model generate text for you. If it's the first time you're using the node, you'll need to enter your DeepSeek API key. You can select the key icon and just add a new key. Then you can head over to the DeepSeek API platform to retrieve your API key and just save it here. But as you can see, we already have a DeepSeek API key selected. Now we can enter any instructions we want the model to follow. Here I'll enter, you are a helpful assistant. And next in the prompt, we can send our message to the model. I'll just ask a question. What is the capital of France? If we expand the advanced settings, we can see some more options that we can set. The big one here is that we can switch the model being used. By default, the DeepSeek chat model is selected, but you can see here that the DeepSeek Reasoner model is also available. And we'll be experimenting with the DeepSeek Reasoner model in just a few moments. After that, you can also configure the temperature and max tokens. That's all there is to the DeepSeek text generator node, and we can put this to the test. From here, we'll just test the text generator node. And in just a few moments, we get back a response from DeepSeek. The capital of France is Paris. Perfect. Let's try a different prompt. This time we'll ask it to write a short love poem. And we'll test again. And here's the poem it generated for us. Pretty good. Now let's play around with the DeepSeek Reasoner model. To begin, we'll need to go to the advanced settings and change the model from DeepSeek Chat the DeepSeek Reasoner. We'll leave the same instructions and we'll leave the same prompt where we're asking the model to write a short love poem. Let's test the node. Eventually, we get back a response from R1. The important thing to keep in mind here is that if you're using the DeepSeek Reasoner model, you may notice that it takes a bit longer to get a response back from the API. This is of course because the model is essentially thinking to itself rather than acting impulsively so as to increase the efficiency of the output it returns. Let's expand the output that we're getting here. And you'll notice this time from the API response, we get back two fields. The first one is just the text generator content. And then interestingly, the second field that we're getting back is the reasoning content. This includes all the reasoning and thinking the model did before it started to generate our love poem. Let's move on to see how we can produce structured outputs in the form of JSON using DeepSeek. We'll bring up the nodes library, go back to the DeepSeek integration group, and we'll want to add the JSON generator node. We can use this node to output fully validated JSON objects. The node has some default instructions and prompt already set for us. If we look at the instructions being used here, we're telling the model that the user will provide some exam text. We're also telling the model that it needs to parse the output and return a question field and an answer field in JSON format. Note how we also give it some example input. The example question here is, which is the highest mountain in the world? 
and the answer is Mount Everest. So we expect it to give us an example JSON output that contains two fields. The question field, which is the highest mountain in the world, and then an answer field that contains the answer. In this case, Mount Everest. This is very important because when you configure the DeepSeek API to return JSON output, you must tell the model the JSON schema that you want to output. And you can do this either via the instructions or the prompt. So let's look at the prompt that we're using here. We're asking which is the longest river in the world? And then the answer here is the Nile River. When we test this node, we expect to get back a JSON object with two fields. The first field will be the question, which is the longest river in the world. And then the second field will be the answer, which will just be the Nile River. Before we go to test, we can explore the advanced settings here. And this time you can only configure the temperature and max token. The deep seek reason of model is currently unavailable when using JSON mode. Now let's put the JSON generator node to test. We don't need to change anything here and let's test the node. Perfect. This is the expected output. We get back a JSON object that contains two fields, the question and the answer. Next, let's look at how we can stream messages back from the DeepSeek API as they become available, providing a much better user experience. First, we'll delete the nodes in our workflow. And now we'll go to the nodes library, go to the DeepSeek integration group. And this time we want to add the stream response node. We can use this node to send a message to DeepSeek and return the response stream to the client. This means that you don't have to wait for the entire output to be completed so that you can start consuming it from your front end. With streaming, as the chunks of the output become available, they'll be streamed to the client. This provides a much better user experience so that your users can start to see responses almost immediately. Notice how we already have a default instructions and prompt set for us. Let's look at the instructions that we're using here. So just a quick dinner recipe with ingredients I have. And then in the prompt, we're sending, what can I make for dinner with chicken, pasta, and vegetables? We can configure additional settings. We can switch between the models. You can select deep seek chat or the reasoner model. For this example, we'll just continue with the deep seek chat model. Next, you can specify how you want to send back the stream. You can either send it back as clean text chunks or server sent events. If you're using Flutterflow, or some similar front-end builder tool, more than likely you'll want to set this to server sent events. We'll leave the option set to clean text chunks because this will allow us to effectively open our workflow in a new tab and see the text being streamed in as they become available from the DeepSeek API. Next, you can configure the temperature. We'll just leave the default. If we bring up the info panel of the stream response node, we can see an important note here. If we plan on sending the stream back to the client as the response, we need to add a set response header node, set the content type to text plain. This will make it much easier for the client to figure out how to handle the stream. To do that, after the stream response node, we'll add a new node and we'll search for set response. And we'll add the set response header node. And the header key will be content type and the value will be set to text plain. And make sure expose header is set to true. Next, we need to make sure that we return the response stream. Select custom output and then for the output value, select stream response. And there's one more thing that we need to do before we can start testing. We need to add a trigger to our workflow. We'll use the REST API call trigger. We'll keep the default generated pad, but we'll switch the HTTP method to get. And then we can connect the trigger. With our trigger now connected, all that's left for us to do is ship our workflow. Once our workflow is finished shipping, we get back a publicly accessible API URL that we can use to trigger our workflow. Now for the moment of truth, let's bring up a new tab, paste our workflow URL and enter. As you can see, we get our response from DeepSeek API streamed in. Let's try it again. Beautiful. And that's how you can quickly set up a workflow to stream back responses from DeepSeek. The last thing we'll showcase is a different approach of using DeepSeek. 
If you don't feel like using the native DeepSeq APIs, or maybe you're looking for an alternative way of running DeepSeq, then you'll be happy to know that there's a distilled version of DeepSeq hosted on Grok. Specifically, Grok has made available a distilled version of the DeepSeq Reasoner model R1. And luckily for you, Billship already has a strong integration with Grok, so getting DeepSeq to work via Grok will be much easier than you think. Let's add a new node to our workflow and we'll want to scroll down to the Grok integration group. And from here, you'll want to select the Grok chat node. If it's the first time you're using this node, you'll need to add in your Grok API key. As you can see, we already have an API key selected. Next, we already have a default instructions and user prompt set for us. Let's look at the instructions we're using. Recommend birthday gift ideas for specific person. And for the user prompt, we're asking what's a good gift for my mom who loves gardening and reading. Now, the important option to set here is tucked away under the more settings. Here we have a list of models available that we can use. But this video is all about DeepSeek. And so we're using the DeepSeek R1 model here. And that's literally all the configuration you need to do to start using DeepSeek hosted on Grok. Let's test this node. Everything is already configured for us, so we don't need to make any changes here. And we can test. Great, here's our response and let's expand it. The first thing you'll notice here is that at the top, we get the reasoning content. This is all the thinking that DeepSeek is doing before giving us an answer. Notice this time how the reasoning content is surrounded by these think tags. We have an opening think tag here. And if we scroll down, we should see somewhere a closing think tag. And you can see the closing think tag here. After that, anything that's here is the actual answer that we get back from DeepSeek. These are all the GIF suggestions it's giving me. How cool is that? We'll stop here for now, because whenever there's a new feature added to DeepSeek or any other AI models that is currently supported in Billship, you better believe that we'll be pretty quick to add those updates. So whatever the idea is that you have, know that Billship is here to help you integrate any of the awesome AI models currently available, minus all the complexity of writing code. That's all for now. Until the next one, happy Billshipping.